Greetings from the road. This is Freighter Jim. It's a bright and sunny early fall day here at the Bolo Museum outside of Chicago, Illinois. This is the exhibit of evolution from wagon trains to auto camps. And this is a uh, covered exhibit, so we're going to enter here. And more rock travel for the wagons during the afternoon and into the evening. After about 15 to 20 miles on the trail, finally, the camp settles down for the night. Contrary to popular belief, attacks by native Indians were rare. Most deaths along the trails were caused by accidents or illness. Illness was the biggest danger. So this is an exhibit from the 1840s. So this is when you were taking a wagon and heading west to the new frontier. This is what you in could expect. In search of inexpensive land and an opportunity, American pioneers migrated to the Midwest by the thousands in the mid-1800s. Traveling in a covered wagon was not an easy trip. The ride was bumpy and uncomfortable. Only children, sickly, and the elderly rode in the wagon. Women and men walked alongside of the wagon. So we're going to go into the next building. They sat shoulder to shoulder on two facing benches with a junk seat in the middle. People had to sleep sitting up as the stagecoaches rolled on day and night. Meals were eaten at stations every six to eight hours. The stop was only long enough to eat some biscuits or beans, beef jerky, and coffee. Stagecoaches did not know up all of the way. They only averaged five to nine miles per hour, which is equal to a quick walk. They had to stop to change the horses every couple of hours. Drivers were changed every 60 miles. A total of 120 miles were traveled per day. Mail got priority over luggage. Luggage was sometimes left behind. Getting the mail through was the main purpose of the stage line. Passengers were only a sideline. No one rode for free. Not even John Wayne as seen in his movies. He would have either had to pay his fare or walk next to the stagecoach. So that was travel in the 1890s. Now Greg takes great pride in this because what he did is he recreated in every detail. You could actually spend the night in this. Here's a little covered lean-to for your car. Here's some period gas and oil containers. Two dollars a night will get you a room. So this was an alternative to camping in the 30s. Let's listen to the audio clip. The typical tourist cabin was modest with a double bed, a table and chairs, a small wood burning stove and a wash basin. Many cabins were located near a river or pond for bathing and washing clothes. While the privacy of the motor cabin might afford the traveler a good night's sleep, it also tended to encourage some illicit activity. None other than the FBI director, J. Edgar Hoover himself, referred to the tourist cabins as camps of crime. And while it is true that gangsters like John Dillinger and Bonnie and Clyde were known to hide out in them between their crime sprees, that was not the only shady use for them. They were also used by the hot pillow trade, by ladies of ill repute, or couples looking for a romantic rendezvous. Every respectable manager made a point of not renting to questionable couples or the local residents to discourage this sort of activity. 
continuing our tour of the RV and Camper Museum. And parks like this one, Hampton Beach, New Hampshire, opened in 1935, still exists today. In 1931, Sherman sells 117. Five years later, his company is producing 1,000 a month. Each is equipped with conveniences like a bathtub, stove, and even ice boxes. Top of the line models feature a telephone intercom to your chauffeur. In 1936, trailer manufacture is America's fastest growing industry, with up to 400 competing companies. But some of that boom is spurred by insecurity. The depression wipes out thousands of homeowners. Foreclosures become commonplace. And sales of new homes collapse. The travel trailer offers an affordable housing alternative. It's cheaper than bricks and mortar and removes the pressures of rent, mortgage, and property taxes. In Detroit, car designer William B. Stout introduces a larger all-metal trailer, which he names a mobile home. It can be permanently fixed to a concrete base. And Stout believes it provides a solution to those who can't afford a house. 
By 1936, the number of trailer cabs in America has grown to 15,000. Complete with utilities like electricity, they create new semi-permanent communities across the country. The era of the trailer park has begun. And parks like this one in Hampton Beach, New Hampshire, opened in 1935, still exist today. By 1936, an estimated 300,000 Americans live in trailers. To some, that's a worrisome trend. One half of the population of the United States will be living in automobile trailers within 20 years. But struggling Americans love their trailers. They enable people to get away from it all. Money, an RV can be yours starting from $395. In 1931, Sherman sells 117. Five years later, his company is producing 1,000 a month. Each is equipped with conveniences like a bathtub, stove, and even ice boxes. Top of the line models feature a telephone intercom to your chauffeur. In 1936, trailer manufacture is America's fastest growing industry, with up to 400 competing companies. But some of that boom is spurred by insecurity. The Depression wipes out thousands of homeowners. Foreclosures become commonplace. And sales of new homes collapse. The travel trailer offers an affordable housing alternative. It's cheaper than bricks and mortar and removes the pressures of rent, mortgage, and property taxes. In Detroit, car designer William B. Stout introduces a larger all-metal trailer, which he names a mobile home. It can be permanently fixed to a concrete base. And Stout believes it provides a solution to those who can't afford a house. By 1936, the number of trailer camps in America has grown to 15,000. Complete with utilities like electricity, they create new semi-permanent communities across the country. The era of the trailer park has begun. And parks like this one in Hampton Beach, New Hampshire, opened in 1935, still exist today. By 1936, an estimated 300,000 Americans live in trailers. To some, that's a worrisome trend. One half of the population of the United States will be living in automobile trailers within 20 years. But struggling Americans love their trailers. They enable people to get away from it all. Okay, that concludes Money. this An RV can be yours exhibit from $395. Everybody, hope you enjoyed it. Drive safe, arrive alive. This is Trader Jim signing out.